Hey there guys, I am the Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. In the latest White Dwarf issue 468, we got some very cool new additions for the Warzone Octarius conflict, which is currently in full swing, this time in the form of a brand new, very rare successor chapter for the Space Wolves, the Wolf Spear chapter. Now, as we know, successor chapters for the Space Wolves are incredibly rare and in fact almost unheard of thanks to the Canis Helix, which makes creating these successes very difficult to do. But it seems as though if you want to play a slightly different wolf themed chapter, then these guys may well be the people you're looking for. In the White Dwarf, there is of course a load of background and lore for the chapter, as well as very nicely a full on transfer sheet for you to really make the units and the models and the army stand out amongst all the others as their own unique chapter. And of course, in the White Dwarf, the thing we're all really interested about as part of the Index Astartes, like we saw for the Tome Keepers and the Exorcists, there is a set of rules for you to use them on the tabletop, being made up of a bespoke chapter tactic, three Warlord traits, three stratagems, and three relics for you to take advantage of. So let's get hunting and find out what these unique rules bring for your force. The chapter tactic is made up of two of the build your own successor chapter traits from the main Space Marine Codex and the Wolf Spear chapter makes use of the Hungry for Battle trait which gives your units plus one to both advance and charge rolls which is honestly one of the better successor traits that you can choose meaning that you can get your squads up the board and into combat that much quicker and with some units like Thunderwolf Cavalry that can advance and charge this gives them a very very nice boost indeed. The other part of the trait is the stealthy ability which grants you the benefits of light cover if the enemy shooting you is 18 inches away or more so again this plays in nicely and will help to keep your units alive as you move up and close in on the enemy. It's rather worthless of course when you're actually in combat but by that time the battle should hopefully be in full swing and with lots of your units in combat it should hopefully be going your way. As a Space Wolves successor chapter they do also get the Space Wolves Super Doctrine of Savage Fury which means that in the Assault Doctrine you get exploding sixes to hit in melee so again this ties in very nicely with wanting your units to be safe and alive as you advance up the board and then making your charges much more reliable with that plus one to really get into your enemy's face and then absolutely destroying them when you're in combat, when you're in melee with them. So I think all in all, it is a nice trait to have. It's perhaps not the most powerful combination out there, but they do work quite well together to do a fluffy thematic set of rules that really do seem to go hand in hand with how the Wolf Spear chapter operates and how you would want to play them on the tabletop. As mentioned, they do have three relics, three Warlord traits and three stratagems. And on the Warlord trait front first, they have some fairly interesting ones. Strike for the Throat is the first and that is very, very useful for a melee focused Warlord, giving you not only rerolls to hit in melee, but also getting you an extra minus one AP on your melee attacks. So this will really turn your Warlord with Frost Claws or something like a Thunder Hammer into an absolute blender. The extra AP cutting through almost all armor profiles in the game and then the rerolls to hit always being useful, especially when you have something like a minus one to hit from a Thunder Hammer. This is a pretty fantastic trait, I have to say, and one which a kitted out HQ will 100% love to have as they charge into combat and get into melee. Hunt from afar is much less exciting in my mind. When you make a ranged attack against a non-vehicle or non-monster unit, you automatically hit and wound on twos. This could be good on things like Combi Melter or something like that, but with those kind of weapons, your ideal target is something like a vehicle or a monster, both of which ignore this rule. So if your Warlord just has like a bolt pistol, it's almost completely wasted and I can see a Wolf Spear chapter Warlord being more melee focused than ranged based on their, their chapter tactics and how the, the stratagems and their other rules kind of all play together. So the idea of buffing up their ranged capabilities just 
doesn't seem as useful to me as something like the previously mentioned Strike for the Throat, or indeed the third Warlord trait available, which is the Howling Beast Warlord trait. And what Howling Beast grants you is plus two attacks whenever your Warlord is in engagement range of an enemy unit with a leadership value of seven or less. So this is pretty great at turning your Warlord into a Horde Killer, getting loads of attacks against things like Guardsmen or Orcs or Tyranid Gaunts. He will absolutely tear through them with a huge number of attacks and then possibly even more with the exploding sixes if you're in the Assault Doctrine. So he can do a huge amount of carnage to those hordy, low leadership style units. I think overall I would probably rate Strike for the Throat as the best of the Warlord traits, as there is no limitations on it, whilst the other two do have certain requirements you have to meet for them to activate, and it gives you two benefits of not only the rerolls to hit, but also that very handy minus one AP as well. So if I was going for a pure Wolf Spear list and I wanted to use one of their specific Warlord traits, that is definitely the one I would personally be looking to take. On the stratagem front, there are two battle tactic stratagems and one strategic ploy stratagem. The first battle tactic stratagem, Track and Hunt, allows you to select a friendly core unit at the end of your movement phase and an enemy within 24 inches of that unit. And for the rest of that turn, that enemy unit doesn't get the benefit of cover against the attacks from your chosen unit. Now this doesn't specify light or hard or dense cover, so presumably they lose all cover bonuses. So if anything is hoping to get a cheeky minus one to be hit, they lose that. If you manage to charge the unit in melee, they lose the extra armor save against melee attacks uh, if they're in hard cover. So this is actually quite tasty. Normally things like this just give you remove light cover, but this gives you a lot more benefit and bringing something like long fangs back to hitting on threes instead of fours and then punching through any light cover that your opponent may have means they can do a lot more damage to your opponent's units than they may be expecting them to. For one CP, it's a very worthwhile spend in my opinion. And if your enemy has some units hiding in dense cover or hoping the extra pip of armor save from light cover will protect them whilst they're holding an objective, this will go a long way to help you clear them off of that objective or do as much damage to them as you possibly can straight out of the gate. The second battle tactic stratagem is also one CP and in this one you select a core unit in your shooting or fight phase and until the end of that phase if the target of that unit's attacks is either below half strength or has half or less of its wounds if it's a single model unit you get plus one to wound rolls against it. So this for one CP is absolutely incredible. Granting an entire unit plus one to wound essentially is very very powerful and whilst it has the caveat of only being usable against half strength or less enemies it does mean that you can absolutely use this to almost guarantee you will finish off those last few models that are you know holding an objective or shielding another enemy unit from a charge so it's very useful just to make sure that you don't run the risk of flubbing those wound rolls which could really make a mess of your future plans later in the game. Again, for one CP, I think this is a really great stratagem. It will be, again, one that you will almost always want to have a spare CP in your pocket for, just to throw it onto, even just on something like intercessors, to make sure that their bolters will be wounding the last few models in your opponent's squad on threes instead of fours, which could well make the difference between pushing them off that objective or them holding it for the last turn of the game. Finally, we have On The Scent, which is another 1 CP stratagem, and you may be noticing a, uh, a theme here. This one is used at the start of the charge phase. You select an enemy unit that has lost models or wounds this turn, and for the rest of the turn, each time a charge roll is made by a friendly core unit against that enemy unit, you can re-roll the charge. So again, this very much focuses on the Wolf Spears battle plan and their battle strategy of going after weak wounded enemies and then really really punishing them. It's really strong for helping a lot of your units get into combat and you can also take advantage of this with multi-charges because this doesn't specify that the enemy unit you charge must be the only target, it just has to be 
a target of your charge. So you could potentially use this to charge in a few squads and tie up a good two or three or four enemy units in melee with your forces while still getting those re-rolls to your charges. And then of course, with your plus one to charge from your chapter tactic, you should have a very, very good chance of making it in with almost all of your units. These stratagems are overall really, really solid in this index of Astartes. They're very cheap at one command point each, and all of them has a very powerful, very focused use. So you know exactly when you are gonna need to use it, and you can almost plan ahead to make sure that your army is in the right position to use these stratagems when you absolutely need to. So Chaps Tactic, good. The Warlord Traits, very, very strong. And then these stratagems, very, very solid as well. The Wolf Spear are looking like they are three for three so far with their rules. But what about the Relics? Well, we start with the Elemental Shroud, which is a very funky sounding camo cloak. And this grants the bearer not only minus one to be hit, already a pretty solid bonus, but on top of that means that the bearer isn't eligible to be the target of enemy attacks if he is 18 inches away from them. However, this benefit is lost if he makes a move of any kind. So the first part is pretty damn good. Minus one to be hit is always handy to have. The second part is, uh, I mean, kind of irrelevant. There isn't much in a Space Marine list that you are likely to be taking this with that wouldn't just be able to benefit from Lookout Sir anyway. We don't have big 18 wound HQ options. Most of our things are under 10 wounds, so they can just benefit from Lookout Sir. If it's an HQ that's sitting back, you can just sit him behind some long fangs anyway, or some heavy bolt rifle intercessors, so that he can't be shot at by your opponent no matter what, or at least until he kills off those long fangs or those intercessors. And if your HQ is moving up into melee with the rest of your melee forces, he's going to be losing that benefit anyway because he's moving. It could be useful, I guess, if your character is just sat on an objective in your table edge far away from the enemy, essentially just making him an untargetable objective holder. So there is a niche use in that. But I think overall, the first part is good with the minus one to hit. I don't think this is a bad relic by any stretch. It will give you an extra bit of survivability. I just think there are probably better options that you could take from the main Space Marine Codex. Totem of Storms is up next, and this is, as you may have been able to guess from the name, a psychic related relic. It gives you a once per battle round ability to either reroll a psychic test or a deny the witch. And note, this is per battle round, so you can't do one of each. You just need to decide if you think it's going to be better to reroll a psychic test, or if your opponent has a lot of psychers, you may want to hold it back to, to reroll a deny instead. It is a handy little relic and it gives you a bit of flexibility in how you want to use it. It's not just a reroll of your psychic test. You, you can kind of choose based on how your army composition is and how your enemy's army composition is. So it does have that flexibility in it as well. If you bring along a psyker and some of the powers are key to your battle plan, you may want to hold it for your reroll. If you're up against Thousand Suns or Eldar or Tyranids, this could be helpful to stifle some of their abilities like Doom or Catalyst. So I would say it's decent overall. It is a bit of a niche relic again. And in some games, you are just never going to need it whatsoever. If you're up against Necrons and you haven't bought any Psychers, it's going to do absolutely nothing. So I think again, a niche relic, but it's decent in its use. And when you do want it or you do need it, it could be quite handy to bring. Finally, we have Blacktooth, which is the weapon relic option for the Wolf Spears. This is a replacement for a combat knife or a paired combat blade and grants you a plus one strength, no AP, one damage weapon, which grants two extra attacks, which sounds pretty shit. But if you wound the target, the target suffers a mortal wound and the attack sequence ends. So this could potentially get you a heck of a lot of mortal wounds with your base attacks shock assault, exploding sixes from savage fury. It's only going to be hitting at strength five or six, so the wounding may be tricky, but this does get you a heck of a lot of attacks. And if you are going up against hordes, then you could pair this with the howling beast warlord trait to get you an extra four attacks. So five on the charge with exploding sixes, you could very easily get at eight or nine mortal wounds on things like gaunts or fire warriors or witches. 
and even marines at toughness 4, you could just potentially blend through a whole load of enemies just through the sheer mortal wound output alone. I would say, again, like the other two relics, it is niche and it's perhaps not the most useful relic out there, but as I said, it could be a nice way to get some extra mortal wounds into your list if you need them, and if you tool out your warlord correctly, this could very easily allow you to wipe out, you know, 10 man squads of witches or fire warriors pretty much in one go with your warlord. I have to say, I think overall the relics are the weakest part of the wolf spears rules. The stratagems and the warlord traits stand out as being really quite powerful and well worth considering. And the chapter tactic as well is very solid for how these guys play and will definitely help you to get into the theme of the wolf spear chapter, getting your forces up close and surrounding the opponent before, you know, picking off and injuring their units and then charging in for the kill against their weak, debilitated forces. So I do have to say, I love the fluff and the theme of the wolf spears, and I do love the fact that space wolf players now have another successor chapter to play around with. They're in a great spot of being, I would say, fairly competitive. They have some good stratagems, they have great warlord traits, but they are not overly broken. They just have some very strong combos and rules that you can pull off with these guys. Multi-charging Thunderwolf cavalry with a blend of warlord to cut through the chaff, or, you know, shooting at injured units with plus one to wound to shift them off objectives whilst your warlord sits back and is untargetable thanks to the elemental shroud. There is plenty you can do with this Index Astartes that is not game-breaking, but is reasonably powerful. But what do you think of the Wolf Spears Index Astartes? How do you think it compares to the Tome Keepers or the Exorcists or just the regular Space Wolves? And will you be trying them out in any of your games? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me, but until next time, I will catch you later guys.